days ago, one of my neighbors had a house fire and the response was incredible. They were there instantly. I think we have one of the best fire departments in the state of Massachusetts. So um, I wish you well. I will be voting in favor of your appointment and thank you for coming. And thank you for everyone else that came here from the fire department and all of the first responders. That shows an immense amount of respect that they have for you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor. If there are no other counselors, I am going to ask the clerk if he would please call the roll. Councillor Bradley MacArthur. Yes. Councillor Darcy. Yes. Councillor Dunn. Yes. Councillor Durkee. Yes. Councillor Harris. Yes. Councillor Katz. Yes. Councillor LaCava. Yes. Councillor LaFosse. Yes. Councillor LeBlanc. Yes. Councillor McLaughlin. Yes. Councillor O'Brien. Yes. Councillor Paz is absent. Councillor Stanley. Yes. Councillor Vidal. Yes. Councillor. I'm sorry. President McMahon. President wishes to vote, and the president votes yes. Madam President, the vote is 14 in favor. One By your absent. action this evening, you have confirmed the appointment of Randy Mullen <laughs> as your next wall panel. Seated, and could I ask, uh, because he is now officially the fire chief, uh, uh, excuse me, still deputy until he has his swearing in in the oath to the Constitution, could I ask his family if they would join the mayor who is in the room and his wife and children and his mother and father please approach the podium up here and any other family members who are here, would you please, for your Family picture, you want this for posterity, get out of your seats and come up in front of the, of the podium so that you're all in the picture for this moment. Andrew R. Mullen, do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear that I will bear true faith and allegiance. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. To the Commonwealth of the Massachusetts. And will support the Constitution thereof. And will support the Constitution thereof. So help me God. So help me God. I, Andrew R. Mullen. I, Andrew R. Mullen, do solemnly swear and affirm. Do solemnly swear and affirm that I will faithfully and impartially. That I will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform. Discharge and perform all the duties incumbent upon me. All the duties incumbent upon me, as as chief of the Waltham Fire Department. Chief of the Waltham Fire Department, according to the best of my abilities. According to the best of my abilities and understanding. And understanding agreeably to the rules and regulations. Agreeably to the rules and regulations of the Constitution and laws. Of the Constitution and laws of the Commonwealth. Of the Commonwealth. So help me God. So help me God. I, Andrew R. Mullen. I, Andrew R. Mullen, do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. To uphold the charter and ordinances. To uphold the charter and the ordinances of the city of Waltham. Of the city of Waltham. Including but limited to, including but not limited to. Including but not limited to. All articles and sections. All articles and sections. Incumbent upon my office. Incumbent upon my office. To the best of my abilities. To the best of my abilities. So help me God. So help me God. I, Andrew R. Mullen. I, Andrew R. Mullen, do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. Congratulations, Chief. Thank you. Why don't 
from down there. That's just as well. We'll let him speak from down there. Would you all be seated now again, please, and go back to your seats. I think uh, the new fire chief, have, chief has a few words for us. Chief Mullen, congratulations, you have the floor, please. Thank you. President McMiniman, Vice President McLaughlin, counselors, Mayor McCarthy, friends, family, members of the department, residents home watching, I stand before you humbled and honored in your confidence in me. I, I am eager to serve you, the community, and the men and women of my opinion, the best department around as chief. Thank you. Mayor McCarthy, I'm proud to have been selected out of a pool of tremendous applicants, all who bring individual talents and skills to work each and every day. Our department is composed of highly capable, qualified people who demonstrate the ability to make our department one of the best in the state. I look forward to tapping into all that potential and working together to successfully meet the inevitable challenges that lie ahead for the department and our city. It's a, been a tremendous journey to get here and unquestionably would not have been possible without a lot of people I'd like to thank. First, my wife Kristen, Brady, Holly, and Ryan, thank you. Kristen, you've been by my side since the smelly gloves of the Fire Academy and my strongest supporter. Without your support, understanding, and patience, this would not be possible. Thank you all for being there through the studying, the exams, the research papers, and classes. You have all sacrificed as much as I have. Thank you. Mom and Dad, you have shown me the importance of public service and serving others. And you have always supported and encouraged me to strive to reach my goals. Thank you. Chief Cardillo, Chief Keogh, thank you for taking a chance on a kid 26 years ago and setting me on this journey. To the past chiefs, Keogh, Cardillo, Sacconi, and McGinnis, thank you for your leadership in positioning the department for strength and growth. You have built a solid foundation we can continue to enhance upon and adapt from to successfully tackle the ever-increasing challenges that we face. Chief McGinnis, over the past four years, your leadership was instrumental in navigating the department through rebuilding the Moody Street Fire Station and all the uncertainty of COVID. We are in debt to you. I thank you, and I wish you a long, healthy retirement. To all the members of the department, that are here tonight, those who have reached out over the past couple of days, those currently in the station. I cannot begin to tell you how much I appreciate your support and I look forward to serving all of you as chief. To the city employees, department heads that have reached out and support, thank you. I look forward to working with and supporting all of you as we move forward to provide the best service to the city. Mayor McCarthy, President McMiniman, Vice President McLaughlin, and counselors. The community is grateful for your continued and unwavering support of public safety. I am excited of the opportunity that, you, I have give, uh, that I have been given to lead the Waltham Fire Department, and I'm very proud of it. I look forward to working with all of you to continue to provide exceptional service to the residents and visitors of our great city. Thank you. Stay right there. Ladies and gentlemen, please. We have a very special moment. Uh, the chief's wife has a badge that she is going to take very lovingly and pin on him. It's going to hurt. And carefully. And now it's official, the badge of the fire chief 
the new fire chief of the city of Waltham, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. The best to all of you. Stay cool. And I declare a three-minute recess while we re re uh, revamp here.
Um, is Nancy Caruso in the city council hallway? We're fine. Stay right there. Thank you. With Councilor Harris. Right there. Okay. We're good. Okay. Please, would the city council come back to order? Councilors, take your seats, please. Councillor Harris. All right, the City Council will please come back to water at 8.15 after that wonderful uh, adventure. Um, the clerk will please continue with tonight's meeting. Madam President. You want to do Nancy Caruso or not? Yeah. You want to do Nancy Caruso? So she's uh, Councilor Harris, uh, I recognize you. Thank you very much, Madam President. Uh, you wish to take a matter out of order. I wish to suspend Rule 39 to take a matter uh, to make a ma take him. Sorry, I wish to suspend Rule 30. Uh, so I wish to suspend to take a matter out of order. That matter mm -hmm. is the appointment of Nancy Caruso uh, to uh, the Cemetery Commission. You all understand the sense of the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Counselor, you have the floor. Yes. Now that that matter is before us, uh, I evoke Rule 39 to act on that matter without committee reference. You all understand the sense of the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. I evoke Rule 41 to act on this appointment of this candidate tonight. You all understand the sense of that motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. I wish to suspend Rule 9 and to hear from off-committee member, uh, candidate Nancy Caruso. Uh, you all understand the sense of that motion. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Councilor Harris, you still have the floor. Thank you very much, Madam President. Um, good evening. I'm going to sit down normally. We stand because you're the candidate tonight. Uh, um, excuse, excuse me one second. Could I please ask for quiet out in the hallway because we are conducting business now? Thank you, Councilor Harris. Thank you. Um, good evening. You are, a, you are a constituent of mine. Um, through you, Madam President, I'm going to make a motion to uh, approve this candidate tonight uh, for her appointment. Um, it was attached with her resume, her years of experience, which is over 38 years of experience in uh, cemetery work. Um, she's had prior experience in, in the community, so I make that motion to approve. Thank you very much, Councillor. Good evening and welcome to the City Council, Ms. Crusoe. Um, are there any council with questions or, or statements? Madam. Councillor, Councillor Harris. Thank you very much. Uh, through you. Good evening. Hi, don't be nervous. I know. I'm very I know. Nervous. We talked okay, a little I bit in the, over there in the corner. Don't be nervous. So um, we do have your application, and the mayor uh, brought you forward. Highly recommended. Could you just talk a little bit about your experience in 38 years? That's a long time, and um, just maybe some highlights okay. for the community. Um, yeah, no, I've worked 38 years at the cemetery. I started as a laborer. I've worked my way up. Um, the last few years, I was an administrative assistant. Um, I just retired last year. So I mean, I know the cemetery inside out, upside down. I mean, I know everything about it. I know the concerns, you know, um, I know all the rules, regulations. I mean, there's nothing I really don't know about the cemetery, and I it's, feel like I could ask it to the board. And it's also your passion. Yeah. You can tell that. And I loved what you put on your application. Your specific area of interest is maintaining beauty of the cemetery at the same time, making it work efficient. Yes, yes. So, I know I know both. I know. like. So it, talk it a little, just talk briefly, just, you know, what, what you think needs to be improved and what could be... Uh, made more efficient just briefly well I mean sp well space is running out and we had to do different things and um, but you also it has to be work efficient too because I worked outside so I know there's things that you can and can't do and um, there's so much beauty in the cemetery you don't want to take that away neither I mean there's a lot I mean and I know people don't like the geese and different things but I mean there's just a lot of beauty there yeah a lot of people use it as walking paths yes, and they yes. enjoy it as a quiet contemplative yes, place yes well, I really appreciate you putting yourself forward. And, you know, after 38 years, you might want to take a retirement, but you've committed to the city, you've committed to your passion, and I'm very proud to support your nomination, and I made the motion for approval. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, based on Councillor Harris, uh, 
Councilor Harris's uh, uh, motion. I will ask the clerk to call the roll, please. Colleen Bradley MacArthur. Yes. George A. Darcy III. Yes. Karen Dunn. Yes. Shanti Darkey. Yes. Kathy Ann Harris. Yes. Hollis Katz. Yes. Joseph P. LaCava. Yes. Anthony LaFosse. Yes. Randall J. LeBlanc. Yes. John J. McLaughlin. Yes. Patrick J. O'Brien. Yes. Jonathan Paz is absent. Thomas M. Stanley. Yes. Carlos A. Vidal. Yes. Wish to vote? President wishes to vote. President votes yes. 14 in favor. By your action, you have approved the appointment of Nancy Caruso to our Waltham Cemetery Commissioners, so certainly um, you'll be a great addition to them. We thank you for that. May I introduce you to the members of the City Council, please? To your right, Councillor Darcy, Councillor Katz, Ward 7. Councillor Katz is Ward 7. Councillor Colleen Bradley McCarthy, uh, MacArthur is at large. Councilor and State Representative uh, Stanley is Councilor and State Representative. Councilor from Ward 2, Karen Dunn. Councilor from Ward 6, Sean Durkee. And to your left, Councilor from Ward 8, your Councilor Harris. Uh, Councilor at Large, Vidal. Councilor from Ward 1, LaFosse. Councilor from Ward 5, um, LaCava. Councilor from Ward 4, McLaughlin. Councilor from at Large, uh, LeBlanc. And another Councilor at Large, O'Brien and I am here. So we are happy to have you on board and we wish you the best and I'm sure you'll do a wonderful job. Thank you. Congratulations and stay cool. And, and, and the clerk's office will be in touch with you in order to have you uh, uh, take the oath of office. So uh, Clerk Vizad will be in touch with you at some point. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. So we will revert back to the original docket that we had this evening with our two public hearings. So the clerk will read the first matter, please. Okay. Except as may otherwise be determined by a majority vote of the City Council, public hearings of the City Council, including those held jointly with the Board of Survey and Planning, shall be conducted in accordance with the following rules. The first 30 minutes, if needed, shall be set aside for proponents of the pending proposal to speak in favor of the proposal. The next 30 minutes, if needed, shall then be set aside for opponents of the proposal to speak in opposition to the proposal. The next 30 minutes, if needed, shall then be set aside to hear testimony from interested persons whose positions are neutral at this time or who are only seeking information. The same sequence shall be followed throughout the entire hearing, alternating the same 30-minute sequences if needed to opponents, to proponents, opponents, and neutral testimony. No person speaking during the time period allotted for neutral testimony shall argue for or against a pending proposal. Any person who in the judgment of the presiding officer is improperly using the neutral period to advance a position in support of or in opposition to the pending proposal shall be ruled out of order. All persons wishing to speak at any public hearing of the City Council shall approach the lectern during the appropriate time period, identify themselves by their full name, sign the log, give their full residential address, and identify the name address of any corporation, business, partnership, trust, association, group, or any other entity, if any, they are representing at the public hearing. No person or their agent shall speak on a question more than once, except in rebuttal or in response to questions from the council. Those persons who choose not to address the city council may, may be counted by a show of hands or a standing count in favor, in, uh, in favor or in opposition to the issue which shall be considered as evidence in the hearing. After all, testimony has been heard from proponents, opponents, and other interested parties. And before rebuttal, counselors shall have the opportunity to question any person who has presented testimony at the hearing without any time limitation. When questioning by counselors has concluded, one person speaking in favor of the proposal shall be entitled, if so desired, to a rebuttal period not to exceed 10 minutes. At the conclusion of said rebuttal period, one person speaking in opposition to the proposal shall be entitled, if so desired, to a rebuttal period not to exceed 10 minutes. 
There shall be no questioning by counselors during or after the rebuttal period. It shall be the duty of the presiding officer or her designee at any public meeting for which is scheduled one or more public hearings to read this rule aloud prior to the commencement of the public hearings. It shall be the duty of the presiding officer to suggest that while everyone, whether proponent, opponent, shall be afforded the opportunity to express their own opinion, excessive needless repetition is to be discouraged. Clerk will read the first public hearing, please. Uh, respect, uh, grant the location. Respectfully represents NSTAR uh, Electric Company, DBA Eversource Energy, a company incorporated for the transmission of electricity for lighting, heating, or power, that it desires to construct a line for transmission under the way or ways uh, here and specified. Wherefore, the, your petitioner prays after due notice of the hearing as provided by law, the City Council may by order grant your petitioner permission to construct and a location for such a line of conduits, manholes with necessary wires and cables therein. Said conduits and manholes to be located substantially on a plan made by T. Thibodeau, dated June 29, 2022, and filed here within uh, under the following public way or ways of the city. Berkeley Street, southwest, southwest, southeasterly from pole 345 slash 13, approximately 238 feet northeast of Meadow Lane, install approximately 11 feet of conduit. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor of the petition? Would you please come forward to the lectern and state your name and residential address for the record and sign the log. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Juan. Excuse me just a minute, please. I'm asking one more time, would the people who are out in the hallway and downstairs please tone your, modulate your voices so that we can conduct business here in our city council chamber. And thank you for that. Now we can hear you, please. Thank you. I'm Wanda Sweatman here for Eversource. Uh, Canton, Mass is my um, residential address. Um, and it's just what it stated for Berkeley Street, the 11 feet of conduit, southwesterly from the pole. Um, 238 feet northeast of Meadow Lane. Um, thank you. Could you just repeat your name again? Wanda Sweatman. Thank Sweatman. Just Swe Sweatman. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> yes. Thank. Mine's McMenamin, so I get that. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, is there anyone else wishing to speak in favor of the petition? Please come forward and state your name and residential address for the record and sign the log. I see no more speakers. Madam President, there's no log here for her to sign. There's no log. We'll, we'll get you one. Okay. Uh, thank you. We'll have one for you. Thank you. Um, is there? There's no one else wishing to speak in favor of the petition. There being none, would anyone like to stand and be recorded in favor of the petition? Seeing none. Is there anyone wishing to speak in opposition to the petition? Please come forward, state your name and residential address for the record, and sign the log. Seeing none. Is there any, anyone uh, wishing to stand in opposition to the petition? Seeing none. Is there anyone wishing to speak in a neutral capacity or seeking information? Please come forward, state your name and residential address for the record, and sign the log. The president sees none. There are no other speakers in any capacity here. So therefore, I close that part of the public hearing and I open the hearing to questions from councils and the ward councilor is Councilor Darcy. Thank you very much. Uh, through you to Ms. Sweat Sweatman. Um, so first off, we had three comments from our department heads the first comment was that the letter for this 11-foot underground conduit uh, stated that it was for, to provide electrical service to 118 Berkeley Street. However, the plan showed the electrical service actually going to 110, oh, sorry, one, yes, 110 Berkeley Street. So can you tell me which house it is that actually is receiving the new electrical service? for that and I have a new letter stating 110. 110? Yes. Uh, say that again. Can you, can you make sure the microphone's on? 
It's on. Okay, great. I apologize. I said I have a new letter that states it's 110. New letter that it states it's 110. Okay, well, I have it with me. Do you have a new letter that states that it's 110? Yes, ma'am. All right. And great. Do we do we have do we have that letter? So, Council, do you have that letter? No. So, if if you would submit that letter to one of our clerks, we'll make copies of that so we can have that. Um, so now you understand, Councilor. She's got a new letter. So that makes sense because the first letter said it was going to um, 118. So, um, so the engineer for the city or his assistant actually was the engineer. He says that if the service is for 110, then there shouldn't have to disturb the bound, but need to uh, be sure to protect the bound. So this is the this is the survey bound right at the intersection of those two lots. Yes. So if you can make sure that the crew is aware that there's a bound and that they shouldn't um, move or damage the bound that's in the ground. Um, and then the engineer says the contractor should be aware that they may cross private water and sewer services for the property and should e exercise care while running the new electrical service to the house. So this is basically, they're, what they're doing is they're replacing the overhead al al electrical service to d be underground. Right. And they have to go under the sidewalk and it's a public sidewalk. So that's why you're here tonight to get a grant of location. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, are you gonna actually remove the segment of sidewalk? Remove the segment of sidewalk? We're, we can repave it once it's completed. So you will remove some segment and then you'll repave it at, at, after you complete the work? Yes, sir. Great. Um, and then I have another comment from the Public Works Department, and they say the sidewalk should be saw cut perpendicular to the grass strip so the owner will eventually replace the sidewalk in front of 110 Berkeley, and this will be a good stopping point for them. Sidewalk should be replaced in kind. So, um, so I would, um, um, I'm in full support of it. This is a very small project. 11 feet just to run a electrical service underneath the sidewalk and if there are um, no issues with the chair of the license and franchise committee or any of the other members. I, I was going to ask if you have no issues I was going to ask him to continue when you're finished. Right so um, I'll let the public hearing close and if you could come back to me that'd be great. Um, I have no further questions. Yes and, and, and we will have that document before uh, we finish here this evening. Right. One of our clerks will, will run that off for you. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank, thank you, Ms. Wilson, very much. Uh, are there any other councils? Councilor Vidal, thank you very chair much. of the Licenses and Franchise Committee. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I had a conversation with uh, uh, the War Three Councilor, and I'm just going to repeat that there's not. This is kind of a small job, so I would like to make a motion to approve it without uh, committee reference. So we just suspend the rules. Yes, yes, yes. I have to close the hearing and okay. then I'll come back okay. to you first uh, after that. Is there any other council with questions here? And seeing none, um, I will close the public hearing and I will recognize Councilor Vidal. Thank you very much. Again, I would like to uh, make a motion to suspend the rules and act on this matter without committee reference. You all understand the sense of the motion with no objection. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. And I would like to make the motion for approval. So Councilor Vidal makes a motion, and on the motion, Councilor Darcy. Thank you. Um, I'd like to add two conditions. One is that the um, contractor should, be take, should take great care not to disturb the bound that's at the intersection of the properties, and the second is that the sidewalk should be cut, saw cut perpendicular to the grass strip. So you will render that uh, in writing to the and if the maker of the motion could accept those as a friendly Clerk, would amendment. Would you accept that yes, friendly amendments? Accept friendly so you all understand the sense of the motion of, uh, of approval. Uh, we'll vote on the two amendments first. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, the ayes have it. Now we will vote on the motion for approval um, for this grant of location um, without committee reference. You all understand the sense of the motion? We're going to vote on not without committee reference. We're actually going to vote on the... Uh, no, approval. Uh, approval. approval of yeah. the matter. Because right, it's not going committee. Correct. 
Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Wilson. Uh, all those opposed? The ayes have it. And so um, with those two conditions, Ms. Uh, Sweet Sweetman? Sweatman, sorry. With those two conditions then um, in place, your grant of location for Berkeley Street has been given. Thank you. You're welcome. The clerk will read the next matter. Uh, NSTAR, Electric Company, DBA Eversource, a company incorpor incorporated for the transmission of electricity, electricity for lighting, heating, pow heating or power, and that it does that it desires to construct a line for transmission under the public way or ways here and specified. Whereas your petitioner prays that after due notice and hearing as provided by law, the city council may by order grant to your petition, uh, petitioner permission to construct and a location for such a line of conduits, manholes with necessary wires and cables therein. Said conduits and manholes to be located substantially as shown on the plan made by T. Thibodeau dated July 21, 2022 and filed herein under the following public way or ways. Sheffield Road, northeasterly from pole 34116, 60 feet northwest of Ethics, Essex Street, install approximately 11 feet of conduit. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Anyone wishing to speak in favor of the petition, please come forward, state your name and address for the record and sign the law. I recognize Councilor Fossey, you rise. Thank you, I'd like to recuse myself in fear of a conflict. Uh, Council, let the record reflect. Council Fossey uh, recuses himself from this matter upon appearance of a conflict of interest. So the first person to speak, again. Again, yeah, Sheffield Road, um, installing 11 feet of conduit, northeasterly from pole 341 slash 16, um, 600, 6, 60 feet northwest of Exeter Street. Thank you. Is there, uh, Anyone else wishing to speak in favor of the petition, please come forward, state your name and residential address for the record, and sign the log. Seeing none. Is there anyone wishing to speak in opposition to the petition, please come forward, state your name and residential address for the record, and sign the log. Seeing none. Is there anyone wishing to speak um, in a neutral capacity or seeking information, please come forward, state your name and residential address for the record, and sign the log. Seeing none, um, so I close that part of the public hearing and I open the hearing to questions from councilors and the ward councilor is Councilor Darcy. Thank you very much. Um, so th thank you very much um, through you to um, Ms. Sweatman. Again, this is um, for actually for a constituent that's moving from Berkeley Street to Sheffield and the same thing, they want to um, put their electrical service underground from the telephone pole under the public sidewalk, so hence they're before us, you're before us tonight to get a grant of location. Um, and again, this is um, 11 feet. The only comment that I received was from CPW and they asked that, um, that the sidewalk be saw cut perpendicular and then replaced with um, in kind whatever was there before. Um, so I, again, I'm, I'm gonna ask the chair of license and franchise if he or any of the other members of license and franchise has any issues um, with this matter. If not, uh, perhaps they could make a motion for approval this evening without committee reference. And I thank you for coming in here this evening. Thank you, councilors. Are there any other councilors who wish to speak or ask questions? Seeing none, I close that part of the public hearing and I recognize the chair of the license and franchise committee whose committee this would ordinarily be remanded to, Councilor Vidal. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Uh, I would like to uh, suspend the rules to act on this matter without committee reference, please. You all understand the sense of the motion? All those, excuse me? I did. I did. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it, Council Vidal. I would like to make the motion for approval, please. With those, uh, with the amendment, uh, we'll vote on the amendment from okay. Councilor Darcy first. Uh, so, Councilor Darcy. Thank you. So the amendment is to saw cut perpendicular the sidewalk and to replace in kind. And you'll render that to writing. I will. You Thank understand you. the sense of the amendment on the amendment. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you. So on the motion of Councilor Vidal for approval. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you very much. Good night. Stay cool. Thank you. Thank you very much. The clerk will continue. 
Her requests acceptance of various gifts, um, including 1940 and 1941 Waltham High School yearbooks, newspaper clippings from 1936, athletic memorabilia from 1935 and 1936 regarding uh, Cal Kavaleski and McKenna families, and the 1936 Tribune supplement regarding the Moody, St Moody Street donated by Susan Kavaleski for the City of Waltham Museum, City Hall Museum room. And with a thank you, thank you to Ms. Kavaleski, refer to the Finance Committee. Uh, the Mayor respectfully requests acceptance of mem mem memorabilia and gifts uh, for the Waltham City Hall Museum Room from Council President McMiniman, from the Northway Biotech Company, and dignitaries from the country of Lithuania. Refer to the Finance Committee. The Mayor respectfully requests acceptance of a copy of the Wellington Farm in Waltham by Edmund L. Sanderson from the Architectural Forum for the City Hall Museum Room. Donated by Ann Giorgiani. Giorgiani. Refer to the Finance Committee. Uh, the mayor respectfully requests acceptance of a uh, police commemorative corn, coin from Chief O'Connell for the City Hall Museum Room. Refer to the Finance Committee. The mayor respect, respect, respectfully requests acceptance of a Waltham parade book donated by Randy LeBlanc for the Waltham City Hall Museum Room. Refer to the Finance Committee. The mayor respectfully requests to go into executive session. Uh, to update the City Council regarding the Fitch School matter. Councilor Harris makes a motion to table the matter and we will take it up at the end of the agenda before the Council recesses to committee. All those in favor, I'm uh, sorry, the, the, the uh, uh, yes, the, the tabling motion is not debatable. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, yes, have it. Clerk will continue. The Mayor respectfully requests acceptance of a mass trail grant in the amount of 500000 500, for restoration of the Linden Street Bridge. Refer to the Finance Committee. The mayor respectfully requests acceptance of the state 911 uh, department training grant in the amount of $29,069.27. It is a reimbursable grant for training related costs associated with 911 system. The grant does not require matching funds and is, and is effective for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2023. Refer to the Finance Committee. The mayor respectfully requests acceptance of a grant through the Executive Office of Public Safety and Security, State 911 Department, in the amount of $226,871 for the State 911 Department Support Incentive Public Safety Answering Point PSAP grant for FY2016. This grant does not require matching funds from the city. Refer to the Finance Committee. The mayor respectfully requests approval of a loan authorization in the amount of $645,000 for phase one estimate of the clock tower repair project at City Hall. The phase one scope of the project includes exterior clock restoration and interior clock tower instrument prep and painting on exposed wood and tall elements. Refer to Long-Term Debt and Capital Planning Committee. The mayor respectfully requests a loan authorization in the amount of $643,000 to award the loan responsible bid for the replacement project for the roof replacement project at City Hall. The scope of the project includes the roof replacement and the removal and replacement of existing skylights. Uh, reference checks for Stanley Roofing Company have been performed and complete. Refer to Long-Term Debt and Capital Planning Committee. The mayor respects a transfer of funds in the amount of $99,000 to engage in the service of an owner's project manager for the design, designer selection and schematic design services for the new police station. Refer to the Finance Committee. The mayor respectfully requests acceptance of a donation in the amount of $1,000 for a bench in memory of Harold, Harold Arnold. Uh, the intended location of the bench uh, will be the existing bench on the Waltham Common near the circle of... Refer to the Finance Committee. The mayor respectfully requests the City Council advise the mayor as to the communication from attorney Michael R. Connors of Connors & Connors representing Hobbs Brook LLC. Refer to the Committee of the Whole. Applications and licenses. All uh, licenses and applications refer to the Licenses Franchise Committee. Resolutions. I have one resolution, Madam President. Would the clerk read the resolution, please? Whereas the intersection of Totten Pond Road, Lexington and Street, Bacon Street continues to progress, now therefore be it resolved that the Waltham City Council request an update on the prog uh, progress from various interested departments, both from uh, within and outside the city, respectfully submitted Randall J. LeBlanc, Councilor at Large, Kathleen B. McMiniman, President and Councilor at Large, Anthony LaFosse, Councilor Ward 1, Patrick J. O'Brien, Councilor at Large. Um, Councilor LeBlanc, you rise.
Thank you, Madam President. Um, yeah, I brought this resolution forward um, with the ward councilor and the president. Uh, it had seemed that uh, construction had slowed down, and when we were first looking at the project, uh, I had a conversation with the traffic commissioner that one of the sticking points of the project was going to be when the telephone poles, the new poles were installed, is to get all the utilities, RCN, Verizon, Comcast, get them to remove their utilities off of the original poles and put them on the new poles as we do not have any authority or jurisdiction over them because they're not working for us. Um, and so that did happen and so the project was stalled. So we were trying to see what we could do uh, to get it jump started and we had some communications and emails back and forth uh, with the mayor who had stated that uh, Mr. Kelly had helped out with some of his contacts, uh, the electrical commissioner, and uh, that it was a traffic um, department project and we did get some communication that um, some of them have responded um, and so we would like to get an update maybe in Public Works and I'll yield the floor to the Ward Councilor also. Thank you very much. Councilor Fossey, you rise. Thank you, Madam President. I, I did sign on to this resolution with the Councilor at large. Um, it's, it's be, the intersection is infamous for traffic and accidents. Um, right now we have sidewalks on both sides of Taunton Pond Road that are in disrepair. They're, they've been ripped out and not completed, so it's definitely a public safety issue, um, as well as the fact that construction has just completely come to a halt during the summer months when we're told that that's when road work should be done. So I, I look forward to hearing from, you know, traffic engineer Garvin on this project as to uh, what the hurdles are that he's facing and to be sure that the project gets completed prior to the winter approaching us. Um, successfully thank you thank you councillors i refer um, just to one councillor leblanc sorry mr president Madam president um did you receive my request did the clerk receive my request we did yes, yes i'll vote on the request after we i refer this Perfect. i'm going to refer this i'm going to refer this matter to the public works and public safety committee and a request was submitted in addition to the resolution would the clerk please read the request i don't have it with me Okay. Can you give us the gist of the request, Councillor? Um, yes, it was to invite in the Traffic Commissioner Garvin to the next Public Works meeting. So you all understand the sense of the request. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. The ayes have it. That too will go to the Public Works and Public Safety Committee. Clerk will continue. Unfunny, unfinished and other business. Waltham Community Access Corporation bid proposal. I refer to the Cable Access Committee. City Council Police Officer Detail Request for the 2022 election. Refer to the Committee of the Whole. Uh, 22, 2022 State Primary Election Warrant. Refer to the Committee of the Whole. Modification of Special Permit Number 33419 at 205, 225, 231, Second Ave for Alexandria Real Estate Equities, Inc. Uh, refer to the Ordinances and Rules Committee. Could I ask Vice President McLaughlin, would you please assume the chair? Um, the next matter refers to the Fernald uh, property, and um, uh, under an appearance of conflict, I need to recuse myself on the matter. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I would like to invite the Historical Commission to join us and call their meeting to order. If you can please come up and take your seats. Ask the clerk to call the roll, please. Uh, let's see, we'll get Rebecca Migdal. Here. Did I say it right? Yeah. Awesome. Murray Daly. Absent. Kathleen Dufermont. Here. Mort Isaacson. Here. Sean Wilson. Here. And Maria Russo. Here. And just uh, Chairman Isaacson, is Murray Daly recused or is she absent? Recused. She's recused. Okay. So Marie Daly is going to be recused for this meeting. 
Councilor Harris uh, moves to take the mayor's communication regarding the meeting, including her um, following communication for July 8, 2022 from the table. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. This matter is now before the City Council and the Historic Commission for deliberation and debate. Will Councilor Harris and Councilor Dunn please escort the mayor into the chamber if she's not already here, or if the mayor could get up the front. <laughs> no need to run in the hall, Mayor. All rise. Please be seated. Uh, Council Harris moves to suspend the rules to hear from the mayor. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Madam Mayor, you know better than to be running in the hallways. <laughs> so I'll be very brief. Um, on 623, I sent to the City Council the memorandum of agreement that's dated December 18, 200. 2014, excuse me, uh, listing the contributing resources, the non-contributing resources. Oh, I apologize. I apologize. Okay. So, Mr. Vice President, on 623-2022, um, I sent to the City Council the memorandum agreement between the City of Waltham, the Waltham Historic Commission, DCAM. Um, regarding the contributing resources, the non-contributing resources, a list of the buildings and structures identified as in extremely poor condition, making rehab unlikely or are no longer extant. And I made a request to have the um, Historic Commission here because they're signatory through the chair, they're signatory of this agreement. So on 7 8 I updated that list and merged the two things together with some maps basically to just um, update you and s see what has been done. I only have two inquiries. I'm not seeking that answer tonight, but these are the inquiries. This is to both the Council and the Historic Commission. Do you concur with the identification of the buildings and structures on page two of the memorandum agreement regarding those in uh, extremely poor condition making rehab unlikely or no longer extant? And two, would there be anything that you would like to preserve in regard to the 12 buildings or structures on the list? So that's what I'm asking to do. I presume that this will be sent to the city council committee. I presume you'll go back, but because we're all signatories to this, I, I believe that I have to you know, bring you into the process um, with regard to that. I do have another map, Mr. Vice President, that indicates where they are, if I could. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I might need a Thank you, Mayor. I may not have. Um, no, I, I might have. Can I ask you to just get that? Madam Mayor, if you can just explain what you've just handed out. Okay, so what I handed out was with regard to the buildings that are listed on page two, whereas the following contributing buildings and structures within the parcel has been identified as extremely poor condition, making rehab unlikely or are no longer extant. Building one, Waverly Hall. Building three, Activity Center. Building six, Chim Chipman. Building 17, Cottage 17. Building 18, Cottage 18. Building 29, Shed. Building 33, West Building. Building 39, Wheatley Hall. Building 42, East Darling Hall. Building 44, Hillside Cottage Garage. And building 49, excuse me, Infirmary Stephen Bone, I mean Bone Hall. And building 19, 90, Shed. So what I have done <clears throat> is update on the second communication, the ones, those 12 are there, but then I merged that list with the other list and I provided a map so that you can see that. So this also shows the map that was the original that was um, given to us. So that's all I'm looking for tonight, Mr. Vice President. And 
I didn't know if there were any questions as to. So the way I'd yeah. like to do it, Madam Mayor, is I'm going to go around to the council first and then to the commission after. So, uh, Councilor Darcy. Thank you very much. Sorry. Thank you very much through you to the mayor. Um, I was just curious on this list that you sent uh, to us, contributing resources in extremely poor condition, making rehabilitation unlikely or no longer extant. Um, who actually made that um, um, decision on this classification? Was that? It was not the city. This was given to us by DCAM and Mass Historic. Okay, thank you. In what date was that? Was was that? I believe I said it was December fourteenth. December, December eighteenth, two thousand fourteen. I believe. Great. So, and then you asked about uh, potentially if anyone had interest on these particular buildings and I, I've had discussions with several people in Waltham and one thought um, where Waverly Hall was one of it's one of the oldest buildings on the site but it's in very poor con condition um, a few people had recommended that it, would it be possible if we could keep um, the, the front fa facade of the building mm -hmm. as a um, historical um, marker of what was there. Any of you that have gone to the Fernald and you've seen Waverly Hall, it's in very tough shape. But the architecture in the brickwork is incredible. So one thought was to keep the facade in some form or fashion. Okay. And that's um, exactly what I'm looking for, Councilor. Is there anything that you feel so that's, is important? You know? So that's one recommendation. Um, I'm happy to see that the school house slash slash gymnasium is not on this list because I think that could be resurrected as a um, indoor recreational space for the for the children of Waltham during the winter time even um, and just to echo with the Waverly Hall same thing with the West building if there's any possibility uh, to keep or maintain um, however small or large some facade of that building because those two buildings were the oldest um, on the entire campus. There is a um, sorry. In the original discussions of this with the previous historic commission, there was a, like an archway. Correct. That some of them wanted to preserve. Right, and, and as you know, if you look at the West Building, the the brickwork is incredible, um, and it's beautifully done. That's all I'll say. Um, other than that, um, I had one question on Wheat Wheatley Hall. There was some discussion that per perhaps the rec department was potentially going to use that as a base or a... Yes, that, uh, I have that on the, um, the updated one, uh -huh. the J July um, one, where it indicates that the rec w will restore that. Okay, that's wonderful. That's one of the oldest buildings. That actually was in infirmary. Um, but it's structurally sound, even though the interior is in tough shape. Um, anyhow, thank you for the information that you provided this evening, and I, um, I don't have any further questions at this time. Thank you, Council Dossi. Council Blank. Thank you very much, Mr. Vice President. Um, through you, to Madam Mayor, uh, thank you for coming in and presenting this. Um, it um, pleased to see. It seems very ambitious, which I'm enthused about. And if you look at, uh, well, that's off topic, Mr. LeBlanc, Council LeBlanc, this, the buildings, right? Yes. Okay, go ahead. So you had uh, something else in the, your hand. That's why. I'll kind of keep it on topic. So yeah. to the point that Council Adasi was making, some of the facades um, are gorgeous. One building in particular, which I think has less historic significance, is the administration building, uh, but it's one of my favorite buildings up there. And I think in trying to save the facades, uh, one of the issues would be as if there's been some, if there's been significant damage inside, and you know, how Hall has some of the gorgeous arches, um, is if it's not in structurally great shape, um, they have to sort of drill through them to pin them to keep them up because you have to anchor them so they don't tip over. Um, so I mean, I'd be in favor of that um, looking into the administration building uh, to see if it could be even if even if the building is in tough shape and the dome could be reproduced into I guess you'd call it a, 
a mod resto um, if the facade could stay and, and okay. mm -hmm. yeah. something different, that'd be wonderful. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Councilor Dunn. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. Through you to the mayor. Um, I have never been given a tour of Fernald, so I can't make any um, suggestions, requests, or anything like that. Um, is it possible to do a site visit? Yes, I'd be happy to have a site visit. Okay. So, um, could we... Um, Council Dunn moves that the clerk schedule uh, with the mayor a site visit, a, a new, an updated a yeah. new site visit to the Fernald. That'd that would great. include both the council and the historical commission. <laughs> uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, aye. the ayes have it. Thank you. Nothing further. Thank you, Council Dunn. Any other questions from councilors? Any questions from the historic commission? Anyone else? Can I go first? Yeah, go ahead. Thank you. Works. <laughs> um, uh, I this 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 predates my time on the historical commission, so mm -hmm. I'm not as familiar with um, information that's been furnished already about the stability of some of these buildings. Yes. Um, but I would like to echo the call out for about Waverly Hall and the West Building and the administration building as part of the historical narrative of this cultural landscape as being three really important components, not only in just the look and feel of their architecture, but also the story they tell and the way they tie the campus together. I think that not only are their facades architecturally significant, but in some cases their fieldstone foundations, which may or may not have been in part dug and built up by some of the patients that were held there at the site, yeah. bear some historical significance as well. So I'd like to get a better look at all of those components before making any recommendation about them. Oh, the, um, the, um, the filing originally indicates some of them that's in the 1990s so we're 20 years later when they have this decam so that's the reason why i want to engage you now because there was a lot of discussion about west whether or not and even in the um filing with the feds um it says may they never said not they also, just so you know, some of you do know, some of you don't know, I was asked to do an archaeological dig of the uh, fence area, and that's on this list as well, and that was um, determined not to be a grave. So, so we have that. I don't know if you have a copy. I'd be happy to provide you a copy of that. Uh, but at this point, I'm only dealing with... With regard to the other buildings, and um, I'm not going to mix those because the determination of this was done in 2014. So, and now we have it what we are today. So, um, but just so you know, the discussion previously was when we were doing the school and things like that. Um, what would you want to save if, for example, some of them, the buildings, um, Chipman and other ones, they're absolutely, they have no roofs. They haven't had roofs. They've been surrounded by barbed wire, you know, long before the city had. So there is um, a study that was done for the state that identifies the conditions of those previous. So a lot of that is on the Fernal, um, reuse website so some of that you can go in and you'll see this various studies on those the ones those older ones too okay so but if i respectfully ask you to look at those first if there's any other that you need but um so if you take the federal filing and then you take all of the paperwork that decam did supporting these a lot of this um the maps have to do with how they identified them because when you look at the memorandum agreement, it's hard to figure out where some of the sheds are, but that one that I just recently gave you, I've actually gone through it all and they are all identified by number, okay? On, if you take all the buildings. So if you, I just ask you to look at that first and then I'd be happy to, 
come before you as well in the Historic Commission, separate from the council, so. Okay, so I, I hear that background information, anything I can give you. Anyone else on the commission want to go before? Uh, yes, just one quick question. Are there any um, projects or buildings that you are specifically targeting that you'd like to get to prior to the winter time when the snow starts falling? Okay, so um, with regard to the ones that have been transferred to the Recreation Department, um, I believe that we're going to get an architect to work on those buildings. So that's Hillside, um, Howe, and the administration building. So we'll have an architect on board to handle those, and it will hopefully be a historic architect. With regard to the um, uh, building, um, not Marquardt, the, uh, yeah, Marquardt, the, that one's been transferred to REC. I mean to um, veterans, I apologize. So that building, I'm looking to see whether or not that building should stay or should it be combined with some of the other buildings that I'm going to come in with the restoration plan. So I don't know what I'm gonna do yet until I get all the data. I can't give you a recommendation right now, but the only building that, um, that I know that the rec board would like to um, Get it get done is the Farrell Hall. Okay. So that, but Wheatley, they would restore Farrell Hall, and as you can see from the plan that I gave you of the 7 8 2022, the um, administration building, the canteen, which is called Howe, the Marquardt Hillside, Cardinal Cottage, which is in the middle, I s sent to um, more, uh, you know, that is going to have the whole outside renovated. We're going to have, uh, I've notified the council of two units of uh, affordable housing there. So um, that's being done. Baldwin was taken down with the permission of both the Mass Historic as well as the Waltham Historical Commission. So on that section. So now I'm working on all the other sections right now. So the only thing I will tell you is there is no zoning for this site. So it's conservation restriction, parcel, one and parcel 2A, 1, 2A, 2, and 2B are all part of the CPA, and then parcel 3A and 3B. I did that just for planning purposes. It's the original map has it as the one that says December 14, parcel 2 and parcel 1. So you can see from the yellow and that one, Mr. Wilson. So based upon that, I'm working on those others as well. Yeah. So now, it's my understanding, for example, that if you have the same building, and then, so for example, Seguin and Wallace are both the same building, just in different locations of the campus, that you could keep one, if, it, if it's a contributing building now, you could keep one, and the other one you wouldn't have to keep. So that's the only other thing that I'm aware of. But I'm looking at the whole thing to see but right now, 119 of the acres are under the care, custody, and control of the Recreation Department, and then the other acreage is what I'm working on. I, I have um, different for 3 8 from 3 B, so the other buildings I will come back not too distant future yeah. on other things. But I just was trying to get the ones that were determined in 2014 to be, um, as I said, in extremely poor condition, making rehab unlikely or no longer extant. So that's what I've zeroed in on because that's what they zeroed in under those. And as you know, under that um, agreement, we have to survey everything. Make sure you survey it before you do anything. And I'm coming to you seeing if there's anything that you want. Mm -hmm. Similar to what I did with Fitch School, is there anything that you would like to see preserved? So if there is, just let me know. That's all, right. all I'm asking for right this minute. And so if there are certain things that we'd like to see preserved and if, if there's an agreement among, among that, um, you know, who, who would, you know, would the, the right people, uh, you know, have the experience to, to, make, to ensure that, that it's, it's preserved? Would they so have a historic preservation That would be background? put out to bid. Okay. So as a condition of any demolition. Okay. So the buildings that I took down, as you can see the ones on the other ones, were non-contributing resources. Right. And um, uh, you have the beautiful pond over there that was reclaimed. Mr. Um, was reclaimed by taking those buildings down. 
So they built right over that pond. And it's beautiful. So soon we're going to be able to open up a lot of the parts of Fernal. Thank you. Anything else, Mr. Chair? Um, yes, through you, to the mayor. Thank you. Uh, Madam Mayor. Yes. Um, so you mentioned the Fernal um, Review website. Yep. Reuse committee. Reuse committee. And th there's a whole bunch of studies on there. In addition, all of the phase one and phase two that was done for parcel two by the school department, that is also on the school department's website. So that is the lower parcel, the lower 45. So, so where is this website? Okay, pardon me? Where is the website? The website on the school department, if you go in, and then Marion Perella, um, if you're having trouble finding, if you go into the school building, all of these things are, are on their website, the ones for the school, that the school looked at. So that's the, the school only looked at the lower 45. So if you worried about any of those, a full phase one and a full phase two environmental study were done. And then we had, there was a section over to the um, westerly part of the site that we actually had to have uh, the hotspot okay, cleaned so, up. So, so this is just, ref when you said that, you were referring to the studies that were done when when it was being considered as, as uh, for the school department. Yes, which okay, was a full phase one and phase two, because the buildings and land. My understanding is that there is a study underway now, the hand-cranked um, productions. That study's uh, done, study. as far as I know. Well, it's not in the public domain, and we have not seen final copies of it. No one besides myself on the commission has seen because I was told not to release it when I was well, originally I'm, I'm given access. That, I'm not aware of that. I'd be happy to follow up with you. I was told by the CPC chair that that is done. So, and he, that was t told me that he's released everything. So, I'd be happy to check that because, yeah, yes, please, to please my please knowledge. Mayor, because I think before we make decisions on things, I mean, that was one of the reasons for the study, so we would have that information, and I think well, that, that's pretty important that we be able to see this, be, so, that everyone on the commission yeah. and, and in the council be able to, to see it. He, he's here, but I will get a hold of him tomorrow because when you asked me for that information, he responded back and said, that's been released. Okay, but I mean, it's, I, I checked with, with the... I don't believe uh, he has a contract anymore with the city. I, I, I checked a week or two ago, and at that point, he still hadn't received final payment because his final product wasn't received yet. It was that's my understanding. That, I could be wrong. Respectfully, that's but. news to me because I asked to get all of the information that he was holding. So Recreation Department went over and got a lot of that stuff. To my knowledge, he gave the information. But I will get a hold tomorrow of Justin Barrett, the chair of the CPC, and Kim Scott, because Kim Scott's told me that they have a lot of original um, architectural paperwork for the buildings. Okay, so okay. Yes, if, if you could check on that, that so, would be and, much appreciated. And he was hired, Brian was hired in between. So that was the request for the CPC to have the survey done by him. And he has a lot of information. So. I have no problem with whatever it is, but I was told that that was in electronic form. So if it's not, I will find out right away. Okay. And I apologize for that because it's my understanding that that is finished. But if he's, has, if he's submitted payment, I haven't got a payment for the final payment. I haven't got that. So, so, okay. so, uh, so you've uh, had a conversation with him, Mark? Pardon? Have you had a conversation with Brian? With Brian, no. Okay. So I don't know who, who's the understanding because I haven't received any request for payment. But I'll check with that tomorrow. I'd ha be happy to. Okay, because that, that would be a key piece of information that we could certainly use in making any kind of decisions. Yeah. And, and the other thing is that a site visit, I think, would be extremely valuable, too, for, for all of us. Yes. But right now, the only thing I'm focusing on is the buildings on the 12. That's all I'm focusing. I agree with all of that with regard to the 12, and I agree with that with the, the other parts of the buildings. But right now, I'm only focusing on the 12, because the others, you know, I'm going to come up, similar to Cardinal Cottage, that one's we're gonna do over. The main, the main um, 
chapel, whatever the name of that street is now, I don't know what the council's gonna call it, but that main um, avenue, Chapel Road, whatever it is, those buildings has, will have an architect. I'm putting that out for architect, one architect to do the three buildings. Cherry. Cherry Lane. Cherry Lane. Yeah, but I don't know what the name is gonna be, is what I'm saying, because I'm not sure uh, Councillor Darcy and Councillor McLaughlin put in the KLM district years ago, and I think that's no longer on your docket. The Kennedy Shriver Malone district, which they had in, the name of that street under that district was the Samuel Gridley Howe, whatever it was. Is that correct? Right. Yes, okay. So I'm not sure what the street's going to be named. I don't do naming the council, only the council names. Okay? All right, so I'll get, I'll get in touch with Justin tomorrow, and I'll get in touch, you know, um, well, with all due respect, you know, you know I, I can't let you speak. The, the chair. So. Um, any other questions? Okay, so that's, um, can I ask you a pen, Mike? Um, Too much writing. I'm just going to formalize that, Madam Mayor. Uh, Council O'Brien moves that any additional information, specifically um, the report that Chairman Isaacson referred to, that that be forwarded to both the councilors and the historic, uh, historic commission. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, the ayes have it. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Madam Mayor, so just so that we understand, you're looking for us to take this back to both committee and commission to deliberate this update. And I'm, I'm asking that this be tabled tonight, and then be wherever you're going to refer it, and it will be tabled here, so that we come back here. You're requesting that it be tabled in council. Wherever you want to table it. Okay, I'm going to refer it to committee. I'm, for us, for our purposes, I'm going to refer it to. The but, um, anything else? No, that's I it. Want, I want to thank the history. I want to I want thank to the historic commission for coming in very much I appreciate it I want to thank the uh, historic commission for coming in uh, also I'm referring this matter to the committee of the whole I declare a one minute recess okay Come back to order. Yeah, that's all done. We're at yeah, table yeah. items. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you.
you, City Council. Back to water. City Council, back in session at uh, 920. Clerk will continue, please. Uh, Madam President, we're up to we're up to tabled items and uh, out of the tabled items, the ordinance concerning disabled and intellectually challenged citizens and disabilities, that has been properly advertised and could be um, taken through the rest of it. So Councilor Darcy moves to take the matter from the table. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Councilor Darcy moves to give this matter a second reading. All those in favor? Opposed? The ayes have it. Councilor Darcy moves to suspend Rule 45 to give the matter a third and final reading, and a roll call is required. So the clerk will call the roll, please. Colleen Bradley MacArthur. Colleen Bradley MacArthur. Yes. Yes. George A. Darcy III. Yes. Karen Dunn. Yes. Shanti Durkee. Yes. Kathy Ann Harris. Absent. Paulus Katz. Yes. Joseph P. LaCava. Yes. Anthony LaFosse. Yes. Randall J. LeBlanc. Yes. John J. McLaughlin. Yes. Patrick J. O'Brien. Yes. John Limpaz is absent. Um, Thomas M. Stanley. <coughs> Carlos A. Vidal. Yes. <coughs> Councilor Harris. Yes. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Call, call, call me. I'm sorry. Call me. I, I didn't call me. President McMiniman. Uh, President votes yes. Thirteen in favor. Two absent. By your action, you have approved um, the ordinance concerning disabled and intellectually challenged citizens with disabilities. Um, the next matter. I think what we're left with now, Madam President, is this executive session that was tabled. Till the end okay, of the so um, the, ma uh, the mayor respectfully requests to go into executive session to update to the city council the matter regarding the Fitch School. So, Councilor Harris moves to take the matter from the table. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. So, will Councilors Harris and Durkee Please escort the mayor into the chamber. I'm so confused. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, and uh, would the clerk will call Council Stanley? I can't. That Sorry. vote's closed. <laughs> Wait, are you here? Are you here? Are you really here? <laughs> Uh, all rise, please. Good evening again. Madam Good evening, Mayor. President. Welcome. Um, Madam Mayor, you have requested an executive. You may all be seated, please. You have requested an executive session in the City Council. Could you, uh, uh, would you explain to us? Uh, this is an uh, executive session for the purpose of discussing real estate um, matters. Uh, Attorney Lockman is here. I'm requesting her to be there, as well as the clerks clerk's office and naturally the council. Uh, fine. So thank you. So Council Harris moves that the city council go into executive session to discuss the sale or lease of the former Fitch school, that the mayor, the attorney Laughman, uh, assistant clerk Wilson be present, and that the city clerk Vizad be the clerk, and that the city council reconvene in regular session at the end of the executive session in open session. So, roll call is required. Clerk, call the roll, please. Colleen Bradley MacArthur. Yes. George A. Darcy III. Yes. Karen Dunn. Yes. Shanti Durkee. Yes. Kathy Ann Harris. Yes. Hollis Katz. Yes. Joseph Pilacava. Yes. Anthony LaFosse. Yes. Randall J. LeBlanc. Yes. John J. McLaughlin. Yes. Patrick J. O'Brien. Yes. Jonathan Paz. 
Ms. Absent. Thomas M. Stanley. Present. Uh, Are you voting yes? Carlos A. Vidal. Yes. You wish to vote. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. By your action, 13. by your action, you have approved the motion. The motion to allow the city council to go into executive session to discuss a real estate matter. So with that, could I please ask if all of the microphones would be uh, muted and if anyone is in the chamber who has uh, phones or computers or anything, other, any other devices, please take them with you. Could I ask the councilors to lock, or I'm sorry, not lock, shut the council door. And could I ask uh, Officer Giordano, will you patrol the hall to make sure that we are in executive session? Thank you very much.